My name is Brandon Shrouth. I'm presenting a short movie that showcases the use of problem solving in my first grade classroom. The purpose of this video is to help educators know the impact of student data to guide instructional decisions. More importantly, I would offer the idea that problem solving affords the classroom teacher the opportunity to have a clear view of students' thinking and how you can further their thinking mathematically. Please sit back and enjoy this short clip. The three essential questions that guide my instruction are, what do I want my students to learn? How will I get them to reveal their thinking? What will I do next? I want my students to develop number sense using numbers greater than 100. I want them to begin to think proportionally. And I also want them to develop and use counting and computation strategies in an efficient way. I've identified these based on what I now know about my students. Next I looked for a problem that would meet these goals. I located a problem on the Futures channel that addressed these fundamental ideas. The problem was that students were to first view a short clip of a woman named Janice who raises bugs, but her ladybugs escaped. This is an example of what one tile of the ladybugs looked like. Janice wants to know how many ladybugs have escaped from her um, cage. The, once students got to see the video and also were able to see what one tile of Janice's office looked like, I then posed the problem. How many ladybugs would Janice have in her office if there were 100 tiles and on each ladybug there were about 100 ladybugs. Students were perplexed by this and didn't quite know how to handle it. Next you'll see a preview of some highlighted strategies that were shared during our math congress at the end of our workshop. This student was writing numbers to 100 and was going to count 100 for each number they wrote. This student was drawing 100 tiles and was going to count 100 for each one written. This student was counting by 100s and tagging each number they counted until they got to 100. Again, this student is counting by 100 and tagging each time they count up by 100. Again, this student's counting by 100s but using an organized method. Let's listen into this student who drew out 100 tiles and is now counting by 100s. 200. 2,300, 2,400, 2,500, 2,600, 2,700, 2,000. The strategies that you saw all varied in their efficiency. They start from being less efficient to more efficient. I took cues from my students and how they were solving the strategies, and I noticed things that they might need to continue to solve the problem. At this point, I asked students to pair up with their learning buddy. Pre-assigned, they got to share their strategy and work together to complete the problem. What I learned from my students. They needed concrete representations. For this I used base 10 blocks to organize their thinking. This was clear in their work. And they needed guidance when writing numbers beyond 1,000. Here students were using base 10 blocks as a model to count their ladybugs. This group of students was trying to draw a number grid to organize their thinking. Instead of this, I provided one. I gave them a structure so they didn't have to take time to make their own. Now they could count quickly. Here students were considering along as 1,000 ladybugs. This problem illustrates for teachers that allowing students to do the unexpected gives them a view that cannot be seen by a worksheet that cannot be seen by a closed task. Instead, students had to problem solve and think through the task. I have to say, the next day, my students were so excited and came in eager to share their solutions. You see, we didn't complete the task in one day, so students thought about it overnight. I never imagined the power that that would have. When we came back and I provided them extra structures that, has, that have been viewed here, you can see students were able to apply their knowledge of mathematics within the structures and allow them to further and better understand what exactly they were doing. 
not only understand it, but also explain it to other students. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope that it provi provided revelations about how problem solving can be utilized in the classroom.